Uh, so good afternoon. My name is Peter Lewis. I'm a senior product manager at Appian. I've been at Appian for about seven years in a couple of different roles, both a training role and recently in a product role. And today I'm going to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, using data in Appian with our data fabric. So we're going to look through a few different ways in Appian that you can utilize the data fabric to build effective applications. So to get started with our agenda, I'll introduce a little bit about the data fabric and give you an overview of what it means in Appian. Then we'll take a look at some of the key objects and application design concepts that you can use with records in order to efficiently build applications within the data fabric. And then finally, we're going to look at a case study where I'll go through an example of a customer uh, management system where we can add and view customers. And we'll take a look at how we can set that up using records. So to get started, what is the data fabric? Really, the key thing is that the data fabric represents a layer of data that you can use within Appian to accelerate your application design. So if you have a number of different sources, say from external web services, databases, or other systems, you can create connections to those systems, establish a way of easily accessing that data, and then once you model that data within Appian, it makes it much easier to access and use that data throughout your application. So it's not just a way of connecting to those systems, it's a way of using that data to accelerate your application design. And this is really the key to our, our value proposition in managing your entire application. We're not just a place where you access your data, we're a place that you use it effectively in Appian. Now, part of why this matters is that there are a few different kinds of data that you may want to use within your systems. So often you're, you'll hear about things like data warehouses or data lakes, and these are often used for analytical data. So if you have some kind of process where you're capturing transactional data and using an ETL process to transform that into a way that you can report on it, that's one kind of data that's, that's useful within your applications. But there's also lots of data that's just transactional data. And in fact, that data is very important within Appian. If you have a case management system, for instance, you want to immediately see any changes or updates to those cases because your users may need that information in order to take the appropriate action. So the power of Appian is that we're able to stitch those two together by having the transactional data and the analytical data that you can use within a single data fabric. And I think you, you all have probably seen this slide before, but I really like this as a visual aspect of understanding how this works in Appian. Instead of having some migration pattern where you're moving all of the data into one place, using the data fabric in Appian, instead you can keep your data where it is, keep the source systems as they are, and simply connect to those systems and utilize the metadata about that within Appian to create effective applications. Now, the way that we're able to do this is using a feature called the Appian Data Service. So the data service is a system that is specifically set up to manage these two different kinds of data, where we have mutable data that changes within our applications and more analytical data or reference data that doesn't change as often. And the great thing is that we've designed our Appian data service to take advantage of these different kinds of data and to really learn and determine the best way to serve you this information within your applications. The cool thing about the Appian data service is that we use the information about what kinds of data you're querying to optimize and ensure that you're having the best performance for accessing your data. So we can index this information, and even if you have data in different systems, cache it locally to ensure that you're going to have the best performance, regardless of what source systems you're using. OK, so we've talked a bit about the data fabric itself. Let's look at the design process within Appian as a whole. Again, you might have seen a similar slide to this, but I think it's a real key proposition to what Appian does. Because we allow you to design applications, automate them, and then improve them over time by optimizing them through process mining. And in all of these different areas, data is a key aspect. 
right? You can't really design your application without establishing what kind of data you want to use or which systems you want to connect to. Similarly, you really can't automate things without capturing information from your automated systems or providing information so that those automations can run effectively. And even when optimizing, data is critical. We have to have captured the relevant information in order for us to learn what we have done and to improve our processes over time. So really, to me, you'll notice we have a number of different features within Appian that, that represent these different aspects of our platform. But I think of data as a foundational part of this. Because regardless of what you're doing, whether you're creating automations through RPA or intelligent document processing or using process mining or even some of our other design objects, by establishing your data fabric up front, it makes it a lot easier to then build your application around it. Now, when you establish your data fabric, there's a few key benefits that you get out of this. The first thing is to accelerate your application design. So in a few minutes later in this presentation, I'll give you an idea of how we can set up records in Appian, which are the key component of our data fabric, and then use the definition of those records in order to create supporting objects. So especially for novice developers, using records is a great way to get started, establish the data model of your entire application, and then add in supporting things that allow you to take action or report on that data. Now, another key aspect of accelerating application design is making sure that we can integrate with separate systems. Now, as you guys probably know, lots of systems have different ways of connecting to them and using data within them. And it can be tricky to make sure that you're accessing those systems in the correct way. By using our Appian data service and caching data in Appian, you can actually have just a few different types of integrations to access your data. And then once that data is cached in Appian, you can consistently use it much more easily than needing to create, say, different APIs to each of those systems. And I think one of the key value propositions overall is that our data fabric is great for novice developers. So for folks that have not used Appian before or are just learning, it's a great way to establish a framework for them to identify what data is important to them and how they're going to use it elsewhere in their application. So accelerating application design is, is one key part of it. But the other key part about our data fabric is it also enables you to actually run your applications faster. So because we're able to cache this data in Appian and use optimizations to give you the best performance for the queries you run the most, we can ensure that you're going to have good performance regardless of where your source data is coming from. You can see a few examples up here of some performance testing that we've done internally to see the kinds of changes that are possible using this data fabric. So instead of simply uh, querying directly from a source or saying from multiple sources, you can easily combine that data into complex reports or do things like search or sorting very easily across the synced data in Appian using our records. OK, so let's take a look at an example of what this looks like. So as you can imagine, many applications in Appian are built around different source systems. So you might have an ERP system or a customer management system. And when you're connecting and using this data in Appian, it's critical that we have this information from all of these siloed sources. So let's say, for example, that now I'm going to create a new application for managing uh, support requests. In this case, there's several different database tables that I'm going to create that are relevant for this application. But I also need to be able to connect to those other sources. If I create a new support request, for instance, I probably need to associate it with a customer or a certain part to make sure that I have the relevant information for that. And this is where establishing each of these objects that you see here as records in Appian enables us to create this data layer where we can abstract out where the source is and make it easy to reference all of these objects and data in Appian. And really, what we end up with is this grid, 
where, sure, the information is coming from different sources, but from the perspective of the low-code developer, all of these are represented as records, and you can use them in consistent ways regardless of where the source data is actually coming from. And this is really where the power comes from in our application design, in that now you don't have to learn how to interface with all of these separate systems. Instead, you can create connections to each of these systems, cache the data in Appian, and then have a consistent way of dealing with all of this data. All right, so now that we've said that, let's take a look at an example case study. And I want to actually go through and create some example records to give you guys an idea of what this looks like both for a novice developer and for some of our more advanced developers. In fact, if you attended uh, the Live Build Challenge earlier, you'll probably have seen many of these things already. This was a key part of building out the beginning of their application by defining these records. So for the case study today, I'd like to look at a customer onboarding example, something that probably a lot of you guys are familiar with. And there's a few key things that, that need to occur for this kind of application. We need an application where we can create new customers, update them, and manage them. We may need to define accounts and associate them with existing customers. And we also want to report on this data. So our executives may need to view dashboards and relevant trends about how we're managing our customers. So at the end of creating this application, we might have a dashboard that looks like this. So you can see information across a variety of different sources, and it's all merged together into one view of this information. So you'll actually notice that there's three different sources of data for this dashboard. We have some data from Salesforce, from a database table, and from a web service. But this dashboard seamlessly merges all that data together and allows us to much more easily analyze this information. OK, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a record type object. So in this application, I'm going to, to demonstrate how you can create a new record type. So let's get started here. You'll notice this application already has a few objects. And I'm going to begin by creating a new record type to represent my accounts. So the account is something that doesn't exist yet, so I'm going to create a brand new database table to represent this account information. You'll notice that Appian can create some security and supporting objects to help us out there. And then when I get into actually designing the record type itself, I can set up the data structure that I want to use that I'll use elsewhere in my application. So I'll start from scratch. I'll use our data sync, which is what enables us to cache this in Appian. And then I'll define the key fields that I want to use within this record type. You'll notice Appian suggests some fields to you. So if there are some common things that you want to draw from, it's pretty easy to access and use them here. But I can also create my own fields. So I added in the value of the account. And I defined an account owner as a user related to each of these accounts. So I'll clean up this data model by just removing a few objects. And then I'll even add in a supporting object here based on my status. So this enables me to create an additional record type that includes key information about the status. And I can even define the choices here based on the, the relevant information for this account. When I create this choice list, it's going to define an additional record type for that information and it will create the supporting fields that will join that together. You'll notice on this next page, I can also choose from existing record types, like the customer in this case. So since I had already established this as part of my data fabric, it's very easy for me to connect to and join with this customer data. So I'll set up those multiple types of records. You can see this basic diagram where I have an idea of what information is available to me. And I'll save this to create my new record type. This will define a database table, and it will create a SQL statement that I can then use later if I need to recreate this table. And you'll notice I can even add in connections to other types of data. So I just connected to the user record type. And by already being able to connect to the customer, you'll see that I have 
gone right into this data fabric that's already been set up, and it makes it easy to access that other information. Now, part of the benefit, in this case, I just moved over to the customer record type. And you'll notice that I already had information set up within this record type. And this allowed me to define security for which records were accessible by each user. If I now go back into my account record type, I can utilize this information that was already set up in the related record in order to incorporate the same security. So for instance, in here, let's say that I want my accounts to only be visible if the user can see the related customer. So I'll simply select my customer as the related item here. And then now, these accounts will be locked down so that only people that can see customers can see their related accounts. All right, let's keep going. The next thing I'd like to do is to add in some actions. So actions in Appian enable us to create, edit, and update objects. And in this case, I'm going to create a new action that will generate new accounts. You'll notice here we have a nice wizard that enables you to see a lot of key steps in creating this. And it will also create supporting objects that are easy for us to get a jump start into building our application. So I've got an interface, a process model, and a few objects that support security. And if I create this action, it will generate each of those supporting objects. And I can now take a look at what that looks like once I save these changes. So because we defined the fields and relevant relationships for this data, you'll notice that now I have this new account button at the top. That's my action I just created. And it has relevant inputs for each of the fields and related data that I just defined a few minutes ago. So this is a great way to easily add in data and to act as a starting point for any kind of development that you want to do based on this account. So I can quickly add in the details here, reference my related records for the customer and status, and insert this new account, which you'll see has been added right here. Now, the one other thing that I'd like to do for this is to display additional information about this account. So to do this, I'm going to create what we call a record view. And the record view gives you context into a selected record. Now, similar to what we saw with the action, I can do this by going through this wizard and selecting what related data I want to display that I think is relevant. And in this case, I chose both my customer and status. I can define some basic information here. And you'll notice again that we create this supporting object for you and connect it to this record. So again, once I've created this, I'll save my changes and head back to the list of records. And we'll take a look at what we just created to show information about both the account and the customer and its status. So I'll select that new account. And here you can see the additional information there. So I timed this video. It's five minutes. And in these five minutes, we started from scratch in creating a brand new table. And we were able to display that information in Appian and even allow us to edit that information. Right? So as you can imagine, within your applications, you'll have lots of these different kinds of data structures. But being able to quickly create them relate them together, take action on them, and view information about them, that's really the critical part of using records as a key to your application design. OK, so in this case, we looked at how to create the record type and add some basic information. But one of the other important parts about using records in Appian is that you can actually use them for other parts of your application. So by defining the data structure, we can use the information about that structure, like what fields and relationships we have, in order to do things like update the data. So what I'd like to show you next is the ability to use this record information in a process. So for this process, I'm going to include a couple of different things. First, I'd like to include an item that enables me to, to sync the data. So if there are changes that occur, say, in an external system, uh, maybe my customer was updated. I can sync that information into Appian. And the other thing we can do is we can actually write back to the source systems. So let's say that I need to change my account information. 
I can easily add in a node into my process model that writes data using records. So let's show this here. You'll notice I opened up this process, and it was a little quick to get started. But I'm starting out by syncing this data if there are changes from an external system. So if a customer is updated, I can use that record as the source for what information I want to change. And then you'll notice at the bottom there's an option for reviewing accounts. This allows me to complete a form, and then I can write this change to the database using records. So from here, I can select the data source. In this case, I select the account, which is my record type. And then once I do that, use that data structure to then write to that external system. So it's not just about setting up your records and establishing the data fabric. It's about utilizing those objects throughout your application. And remember, regardless of what the source is, in this case, the sync records and the write records are actually two different sources. One of them is Salesforce, and one of them is a database. But because we've established this data layer of our, our records, it enables us to interact with them in the same way. And it's much easier for novice developers to create more complex applications. OK, so we've looked at setting up the data structure and interacting with it in workflows. But one more thing that we can do is we can also utilize this to report on the data and extend the information that we have. And one of the key features for this is what we call our custom record fields. So if I go back to my record type designer, from there, I can create these custom record fields to extend data based on relevant information. So let's say, for instance, that I have an account, and I'm really interested in knowing whether my accounts are updated on time. So after the account is created, within seven days, I need someone to confirm that that account information is correct. And to do that, I can create a custom field to check the, the SLA or the, the service level agreement for ensuring this is up to date. And to do this, I can compare the date when the account was added and the current date and give different categories based on that information. Now again, this information doesn't exist in the data source. But because we can use our custom record fields, we can extend this. And then you can even take a look. It looks just like any other field within this data source. So if I need to create grids or charts or other reporting, it's much easier to use this additional analysis with this field I just created. And specifically, you'll notice on the next screen that I can start to use this information and gather it using our no-code queries. So now that I added in that new field, I may want to query the information, perhaps to display it in a report. And I can generate queries by simply choosing the record types I want to display, choosing a number of configurations based on whether I want to aggregate or filter on the data, and then test it out to make sure that I'm returning the correct information. And by creating these building blocks, it makes it very easy to ensure that I'm getting the correct information and then effectively use it elsewhere in my application. So really, to me, having records as the source is a key way of accelerating our application design and ensuring that we're going to, to be able to build our applications most effectively. All right, so you may see all of this and say, well, this looks great. So what, how, how do I try this out myself? Well, if you haven't tried it before, there is an example, Appian Community Edition. Um, this is a great way to get a sample instance of Appian. There are some training videos where you can see more information about creating records. And you can also try things out yourself by creating your own record types or extending some of our pre-built applications. So if you haven't tried this on Community, I highly recommend it. Uh, anyone should be able to create these records from scratch and get started in just a few minutes. And just to summarize everything that we've talked about, of course, Appian has a lot of really important capabilities, uh, whether it's process mining to be able to analyze and improve our systems, whether it's process automation to ensure that we can complete steps automatically and incorporate other technologies like intelligent document processing or RPA, or even whether you're just providing a great experience 
to users in different environments, whether it's web or mobile. But to me, the data fabric is just a foundational layer of all of those things. Because regardless of how you're displaying, using, or analyzing information in Appian, it always starts with the data. And if you can design your applications by setting up that data structure, identifying the key information that you want to use, and then using it throughout your application, that's going to ensure the, the best application design process and the best experience for your users. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it.